This is lesson 16-3, which is working on quadrilateral names. So for guided practice, again, we've already done those in class, so we're starting with number 8. So write all names for each possible quadrilateral. So remember, there's not just one name for it, there's many. So our first one, what do we have here? Well, it has four sides. All of these it already told us are quadrilaterals. So that means all of them are going to have the name quadrilateral at least. Then what other kind of shape it is? Is it? Well, I see it has a parallel side here and here and here and here. When they have two parallel sides, that is a parallelogram. Okay, that's it for number nine. So let's check out number or number eight. So let's check out number nine. Again, this is a quadrilateral. And then what else do we have? Well, we have parallel sides, one pair here, one pair here, one pair and one pair. So it is also a parallelogram. And then what do I notice about each of these sides? Well, I notice that each side is the same distance. So if they're the same distance, if they're all equivalent, they're all the same size, then it is also a rhombus. Now let's look at this last one or second to last one. Again, we know it's a quadrilateral because it has four sides. We know it's a parallelogram because when I look at it, it has a parallel side here and here, and a parallel side here and here. What else do I notice about it? Well, all the sides are the same. So there's my tick mark showing they're the same, so it's a rhombus. But it is also a special kind of rhombus because it has right angles, that means it's also a rectangle. And because it has right angle and all the sides are equivalent or the same, it is also a square. So this one has six different names. Okay, for number 11, our last one this side, again, it's a quadrilateral because it has four sides. We also see that it has pairs of parallel sides. So that means it's a parallelogram. Oops. It doesn't have all sides that are the same, so it's not a rhombus or a square, but it does have right angles. So that means it is also a rectangle. Okay, let's head to our next one. Jamie swims at a swimming pool. The length of the pool is 25 yards. She swam a total of 150 yards. How many times did she swim the length of the pool? Use the bar diagram to write and solve an equation to find your answer. Well, here we have 150 as the total. And what are we doing? Well, that's our total. And so we have groups of 25. So we have groups of 25, but we don't know how many groups. So I, how many groups is this n? So my equation is 25 times n equals 150. And then how do we solve that? Well, we know it's 150 divided by 25 because we're making groups of 25. So that will be 6 times. Multiply, subtract. So what does n equal? n equals 6. So she swam the length of the pool 6 times. Head off to number 13. Tia says every square is a rectangle and every square is a rhombus, so every rectangle must be a rhombus. Do you agree? Well, we're going to say no, we don't agree. And right here, even without checking her whole argument, she's saying every rectangle must be a rhombus. If you remember on our last page, we had the football field. We knew this was a rectangle, but all the sides aren't the same. This side is not the same as this side. So I know there's something wrong with her answer. So our answer is no. And then how are we going to justify it for our explanation? We have any rectangle that has two pairs of different lengths is not, and I'm going to underline not because that's our important part, is not a rhombus. 
And what do I notice? Well, I notice that's my example. I just talked it up before we drew it. Number 14, is it possible for a quadrilateral to be both a rhombus and a parallelogram? Explain. So our answer is yes. And we actually saw this a lot on problems 8, 9, and 10. So rhombus is a specific kind or type of parallelogram. All it has to do is has to have sides that are equal. Number 15, what number comes next in the pattern? The rule is multiply position number by itself. Describe a feature of this pattern. So what do we have? The position number. So that means this is position one, position two, position three, position four. So this would be position five. And they say multiply the position number by itself. So this would be one times one. This would be two times two. Position number is three times itself, four times itself. So what would this be? Well, this would be five times five. So that would be 25. So describe a feature now. So what do we notice about the pattern? It goes even or odd, even, odd, even. So that's going to be my feature. So the feature, there could be other answers too, but it just wants one since it says A. The feature is that it goes odd, even, odd, even. Okay. Number 16. All sides of an equilateral triangle are the same length. Is an equilateral triangle also a rhombus? Explain. So our answer is no, because what do I notice here? Well, triangle, that prefix tri means three, and we know that a rhombus is four sides. So that's going to be my basis for this answer. So a triangle only has three sides. A rhombus has to have how many sides? Four. Okay, number 17. Could you use the formula for finding the perimeter of a square to find the perimeter of another equilateral? I'll explain. Well, if we don't remember what our formula is for a square, they're giving it to us right here. So they're saying 4 times s. So let's just draw an example really fast to check it out. So we're going to say the length is 5. So what would my perimeter be? Well, it's 4 times s, which would be 4 times 5 which would be 20. They're asking, can we use this to find the perimeter of another quadrilateral? Explain. Well, if I look at this right here as a rectangle, if this length is 5, this side's obviously smaller, so that would be 2. If I use that formula of 4 times s, that would be 4 times 5 which is 20 again, but I know that's not really the perimeter because this would be 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So it looks like our answer is no. But wait, if you remember, there's different kinds of quadrilaterals. It doesn't say for all quadrilaterals, it just says another. So what other quadrilateral has the same sides? That's a rhombus. So remember, rhombus is just slanted. So, oops, that's actually still a square because I still made the angles 45 degrees. So let's try this one. So I need it to be like a diamond where it's not 45. So here, if it's a rhombus, that means all the sides are the same. So it would still be 4 times 5 equals 20, which is the same as 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So... We now need to do our explanation. So we're going to say yes, and then our explanation would be you could use four times s, s being that side, to find the perimeter of a rhombus.
because all rhombuses have what? They have four sides that are equal. Have four equal sides. Number 18, our last one. Ben draws the shape shown at the right. So he draws this shape. He says the shape can be classified as a quadrilateral, trapezoid, and parallelogram. Is Ben correct? The answer is no. Well, why is that? Well, it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides. So let's put that there. It is a quadrilateral. But what else do we know about it? It is a trapezoid. Because it has one set of parallelogram or parallel lines. And if I look over here, that set is the top and the bottom. These ones, the sides, are going to intersect right there. So that means it's a trapezoid and not a parallelogram. It's not a parallelogram. And I'm running out of room on my iPad writing. It's not a parallelogram because, why? Again, it only has one set of intersecting sides. has one set of intersecting sides. That's it for lesson 16-3. I'll see you guys later.